What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. So, first of all, let's just all give ourselves a little round of applause. A little pat on the back. Because breaking the record is pretty awesome. You know, all-time MLS record set tonight, that's pretty awesome. You know, to say that we managed to do that, to say the team that we built here, you know, expansion team no less, managed to break the record, set it, I mean, that's something special. However... <laughs> Here's my problem with this. It should have been the icing on the cake. It should have been just top of it, you know, cherry on top, you know, whatever you want to call it. It should have just been the end to a great night. What it turns out being, it turns out being the thing that just slightly puts tonight as being a good night. You know, if it not for that, if not for the fact that we broke the record, tonight would have just been a eh. But the fact that we broke the record is kind of like, okay, that's good. You know, we did do something that was good. We pushed it over the edge. On the balance scale of good and bad night, it's slightly good because the record makes it slightly good. But it shouldn't be that way. It should be tonight was a great night. It was amazing. It was awesome. We broke the record even better. So let's talk about this game because, oh my gosh, being a spectator, being a, a fan... I'm so, so frustrated because before the game even starts, you know, I was talking about it when I did my review of the uh, the New England game. I'm talking about all the different possibilities we can do, all the different lineups we can do. You know, we've got no Perez. Found out today we have no Garza. Okay, you know, let's, let's talk about what we can do. You know, let's talk about what different formations we can put out there. He went with the worst lineup he possibly could have gone with. And that's frustrating because what ends up being a good job, guys, you saved the tie, you know, you managed to equalize late, should have been a, no, we've got control of this game. This is our game. This is our field. We're going to dominate this game. But the lineup just doesn't help us do that at all. So let's talk about it. First of all, like I said, no Perez. So what are our options? Well, you put Boswell back there. You know, we haven't actually seen him yet, even on the bench. But I assume he's been training with the team. You know, we haven't heard anything about an injury. I assume he's been a part of the team somehow. So, you know, that's an option. Another option, you move Anton in the middle. I mean, he he's played center back before. You put Tyrone out on the right. That's an option. You know, that's a pretty good option on, on that. You know, I, Anton's done pretty well defensively recently. Tyrone, a little bit worrisome, but, you know, he works pretty hard. So, why not give that a go? But instead, what he does... Because our back line is already really shaken up because of these two injuries that we've got. Well, injury and suspension. So, instead of just messing up the back line for tonight, Tata's thought is, hey, let's mess up the midfield as well. So, he drops Jeff back into defense, puts Julian in the middle, and there's your recipe for disaster right there. I mean, I don't understand how people who watch this and actually understand the sport can still look at Julian and say, oh yeah, that's a good decision. Like, got nothing against the guy. You know, great assist tonight. He's not a midfielder. He's definitely not a defensive midfielder. He is a winger at this point because basically what he's good for is sending balls over the top. He does very well at making a good run. And most of the time he does a very good job at cutting it back or putting in a little uh, like pass across to somebody. He does that part of his game very well, and that's honestly where I think he's been at his best is whenever he goes out to the right side, and then he's just sort of out there on his own. Most of the time, defenders may leave him alone, and so now he's got a ton of space to go. But in the midfield, he doesn't have nearly the quick feet for that. He doesn't have the speed for that. He doesn't have the agility for that. He's not a midfielder, and it showed. <laughs> it showed really, really bad because they were constantly at us. You know, it... It reminded me of like the first five games that we were involved in. It felt so dangerous because it felt like every single time we lost the ball at, at their box, it felt like we were just going to be attacked instantly because we couldn't seem to figure out how to put pressure on them to force them to give the ball away. So they just kept counterattacking on us. That's what tonight felt like. And I've not really felt that over the past few games. You know, We did have a couple hiccups in D.C. and Philadelphia, but those weren't counterattacking goals. Those were just stupid mistake goals. This tonight felt like the old us, you know, the us that would get counterattacked on time and time again. 
And a lot of that had to do with Julian's in the middle, and he's not good enough to cut out the counterattack. So there's already a first problem. Moving Jeff back in, not a bad decision, but at the same time, it kind of limits him on what he does, which is he cuts off the counterattack. You know, Carlos does it fairly well, but Jeff's the one that really does it well. He reads the play very well. He puts himself in there. So now, instead of them turning and running at our defense, normally Jeff's there to stop him from turning. And so now they have to go backwards, or it's a foul, and now we have time to come back and reset. So you've already taken the best player in the midfielder out of the midfield, and then you put Julian in there who's not going to do that. What else can you do to mess it up? I know. Let's put Chris McCann out at left back. Anybody? Any takers on how stupid this idea is? Anybody? Am I, just me? Am I the only one that thinks this is a stupid idea? Anybody else? I can't be the only one. I cannot be the only one who looks at this and says, really? <laughs> we've got Mikey Ambrose. We've got Mark Bloom. We can push Anton to the left and push Tyrone to the right. So many options. And you put Chris McCann out there. Again, nothing against him. Great crossing for the goal. He does his crossing tonight was spot on. He's not a defender. And it showed their second and third goals. I mean, the first goal already, you know, he's not in the right position. And so Jeff's having to challenge for the header instead of him challenging for the header. So already he's out of position for the first goal. Second and third goals, the exact same goals. I mean, the exact same. Guys out wide, Chris is all the way in the middle, not stepping to him. He has about 30 minutes to just set up a cross and deliver it to the back post perfectly, and then Anton doesn't do his job well enough to shut off the, the header on the far side. But it all starts from Chris isn't a defender. And so he's not, he doesn't have the mindset of, oh, I need to go close that down. You put Mikey out there, I mean, he did it later in the game for some reason, whenever we needed a goal, but whatever. But you put a defender out there, they're going to go close that down to make sure they're not going to have an easy cross. They're going to have to cross it under pressure. I just, I don't understand these decisions at all. And even like the subs, you know, the first sub, greatest, the only good decision in my opinion that Tata made, aside from the usual good decisions, you know, the same front four. Kevin Kratz comes on for Julian. Next thing you know, we're winning every single ball that comes out of their box. Because that's the type of player Kevin is. He is very good at shutting down everything. He closes very well. He's very quick to close down as well. I mean, he's aggressive. And so all of a sudden, it went from we're, we're possessing, 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 we lose it, they're at us. Now it's we're possessing, we're possessing, possessing, we lose it, they kick it out. Kevin wins it. Jeff can step in and win it. I don't know. Somebody's putting pressure on it, and it's not Julian. And now we've won it back, and now we can go back at them. And so now, for the entirety of the second half, whenever Kevin came in, it was just us. It was all us going forward. They occasionally got a little bit of a breakaway, but we shut it down fairly well. Because our defenders didn't have to do nearly as much. The only good decision. After that, though, uh, Anton goes down. You have to make the sub then, so that's not. I'm not going to call that a good decision, because really it's the only decision you can make. Uh, Tyrone comes in for him. And then, for some reason, we need a goal. You know, we're not looking to draw. I, they look like they were trying to draw, but I'm not looking for a draw. I mean, we have 70,000 people in there. We broke the MLS record tonight. Let's go for the freaking win. We have a chance not only to boost our chances of pushing up into the top. However, you know, we, we have two games at hand on first, second, and third. We win both of those games at hand. Guess what? We're two points behind second place. We drop points like we do tonight. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, not only that, we win this. There's a good chance Orlando's not going to qualify for playoffs. You have a chance to get three points and knock your supposed rivals out of the playoff race. Why not go for a win? But no, let's just put on another defender. You know, put on Mikey, who probably should have started. And yeah, that does make us more sound defensively. But guess what? Who cares? We want a goal. We want to go score. We want to go win. Bring on Brandon. He has not played over the past few games. For whatever reason, he was changing games. He was coming on whenever we were down, whenever we needed a goal. He's coming on and changing games. All of a sudden, we look dangerous in the box. Tonight, we already look dangerous. Imagine how it would have been if Brandon was in there as well. He's already good in the air. He's quick with his feet. You put him in there. 
we're already dumping balls in. You, Mark, Joseph is getting on a couple of them. But you put him in, now you've got two options up there. It, it just makes so much more sense to put him in. But for some reason, Ty Ty's like, no, no, no. We need to hold on to this one point. <laughs> we have the momentum. Let's go put it away. Hey, so, yeah, I'm... You know, as far as the players are concerned, I'll quickly go through the I individuals. Um, Brad and Goal, you know, had a couple he probably could have done a lot better on. You know, there were a couple times he came out to punch and didn't really get there. Uh, part of that is because the the change of defense, you know, it's very difficult whenever you got a, a new back line, you know, halfway new back line. Most of the time, it's hard to work with a back line as a keeper if you haven't been working with them before. Um, and so there is a little bit of uncertainty whenever it comes to that. However, a keeper of his quality should be doing better. You know, on the crosses, on the third goal, he's got to come and collect. He's got to make sure he gets his hand out and makes a save because, you know, that's what you're there for. And he's done well up until now. Tonight was just, you know, a couple moments of just lacks of co lapse of concentration. And one's a goal, one leads to, or a couple lead to a dangerous chance. So a bit back and forth. But overall, you know, still had to be kind of a solid foundation back there and did pretty well there. Um, Chris on the right, you know, like I said, great delivery, but defensively he just he doesn't have it to be a left back, and we needed a defensive left back tonight. And kind of typical of, I guess, a possession-minded manager, you like to have defenders that can play. You like to have defenders that can move the ball around. I, I guess I'm just old-fashioned. I prefer to keep a clean sheet. You know, I'd rather we win one nothing than <laughs> win 5-1. Five to, five to one. Because that means we gave up a goal. You know, I don't want to give up goals. And putting in somebody who's not a defender into your defense is just a sign that you don't care about giving up goals. You just want to have somebody in there that can pass the ball. Um, Jeff, you know, kind of slotted into that defensive role tonight. He's used to sort of being that defensive player, but I think being out of the midfield and being more of a, I have to drop, I have to be a defender instead of, you know, being in the midfield. I don't know. It is a lot different, being a defensive midfielder, being a defender. Uh, and you could see it just, it didn't feel comfortable for him tonight. Just the way he played, it didn't seem like he was up to his usual confident play. Um, so I was just, I, once again, really disappointed that Tata, for some reason, decided he wanted to make all these changes. It affected certain players. You know, some of them were out of their comfort zone. Um, Michael... Another player put under a lot of pressure tonight because of these changes. Honestly, he had to be the one back there. You know, because it became almost like a back three at moments because Chris would go flying up the field, Anton would slot in, and it was like the back three was there. That's not what we want, though. And Michael was put under a lot of pressure because of it. He had to make a lot of one-on-one -on -one game saving decisions where he's either having to force them wide or slow them down to let other people recover. But whatever the case, you know, he handled it as best he could, and in my opinion, played very well, considering that he was sort of left on his own half the time because they were throwing two guys forward. Um, but yeah, I was I was impressed with Michael tonight. He's one of the few that did impress me, uh, and did so under extenuating circumstances as well. Anton tonight just was not his game. You know, missed the two headers that led to the goal, uh, the the second and third goals. As far as his play, you know, it was a lot slower tonight. Defensively, he didn't look as solid. He just he didn't look like he was up for the game. I don't know if maybe the intensity got to him. I don't know if maybe he's tired from playing two games in the past week. Whatever it was, though, that was him. It's shoving open doors like that. How dare you? That's rude. Anyway, um, but yeah, but for whatever reason, you know, he did not look up to the pace. He looked very off tonight. Frustrating there. Uh, Julian in the middle, you know, like I said, great assist, but doesn't really provide much for us defensively, and that's what we need in that defensive midfield role. You know, you need somebody in there who's going to break up the play, who's going to help you out defensively, keep them from running at your defenders. He's not that. Um, on top of that, his play on the ball at times can be very clever. You know, at times he can find a good pass, uh, like, you know, for the goal. Great little move around the defender, keeps it in, and then finds Joseph on the back post. However, you know, there are a lot of times whenever the ball goes to him, and because he's not quick-footed, 
it takes him a couple more seconds than it would take somebody else, and in those couple seconds, the play is now gone. You know, whether the, the, the run that somebody was making is now not available or whether he's been closed down to where now he has to play backwards. Whatever the case, you know, he just he's not a midfielder. Um, Carlos, you know, was kind of almost left alone at times because, like I said, Julian's not that defensive midfielder. So he was sort of the one that had to try to break up the play tonight. Uh, he's okay at it, but in my opinion, watching him play, he's kind of sporadic. You know, there are a lot of times where he'll go flying into a challenge when he doesn't need to. You know, he'll go sliding in and he'll get beat or he's tripping up somebody, gives away a foul, gets a yellow. So he's okay. He's a good player. But in my opinion, he's just too erratic to be the one that's supposed to be holding down the midfield. You know, where Jeff is very solid and composed, Carlos is not. Um, up into the, the three behind Joseph, uh, Yamil definitely looked off the pace. You know, didn't look as quick as he normally does. Still did work very hard and still brought that intensity that I like to see. Um, but, you know, his work on the ball has got to get better. And maybe maybe give him an off against L.A., you know, try Jacob in there. Um, maybe give Julian a start up on the left or on the right, whatever. But, yeah, I'd say give him a rest on Wednesday because he looked like he really needed it by the end of this game. Uh, Miguel... At times got a little bit frustrated, and you could see, you know, there are a couple spats between him and Yamil, him and Joseph. So there were times where you could see he was getting pretty frustrated with what was going on out there. He was getting frustrated with the lack of connectivity up top. Uh, there were moments where a couple players turned off, and you could see that's also frustrating, and I totally get that. However, at some point, you just have to say, you have to be professional. You know, you have to say, all right, whatever, I'm frustrated, things aren't going my way, I'm going to turn them around, I'm going to make them go my way. Because honestly, he never really got to that point. He was too busy focused on arguing, focused on yelling at referee, yelling at Joseph, you know, whatever. While everybody else is getting on with the game and bringing us back into it. You know, so while he's a very clever player, and there were moments where he put the other team defense on the other, uh, the Orlando defense on the back foot, you know, he forced them to have to run back. He did that at times very well, but nothing came of it because he was so focused on, oh, I'm frustrated and... I'm going to look for a foul or whatever. He's so focused on other things that he's not really helping the team tonight. And that's where you look at, you know, Joseph. I've been frustrated with him in the past. Tonight, there were moments where I got pretty frustrated because he kind of turned off. But ultimately, he's still working hard enough to get a hat trick and get us back into the game. Miguel didn't have anything to do with that. And that's the first time I can say that about him is that he really wasn't involved in our comeback. He was one of the ones that looked like he was going to break up our comeback. So, yeah, I was a little bit frustrated with him tonight. And I realize he's young, so he probably has a young mind. You know, that that kind of frustrated, I'm going to get mad and, you know, make some naive decisions. Uh, but, you know, as a player who is growing and is becoming probably one of the best players in the MLS, you've got to learn to control that or else you're not going to be one of the best players. You're just going to be a player who turns it on at some games and looks really good, and in other games you're just not involved at all. Uh, Tito on the right worked very hard tonight. Uh, had to as well because Anton was caught out a couple times and he had to really get back and help out. Uh, but just as far as his work ethic, you know, I really like that tonight. He, he's not a player that I've typically known for working hard to win the ball back or, you know, doing stuff like that, doing the defensive side of it. Normally I see Yamil doing it more than he does. But tonight I really thought he worked both sides of the ball very well, and ultimately I was very impressed with him. And then, of course, you know I already talked about Joseph a little bit, but yeah, he got us back in this game, made some really good runs, got in the end of some crosses, and just forced us back into it when we needed somebody to. So yeah, I was really impressed with him, uh, even though there are still moments where he sort of turns off and I can get frustrating to watch. I still think he's got the quality and he's got the temperament as well to see, all right, I'm frustrated, but we got to win this. we got to get goals, so I'm going to keep working hard. I'm going to keep putting myself in dangerous positions and try to get on the end of something. Um, on to the subs that came on. Uh, like I said about Kevin already, I mean, he came on and really did change the game to the point where he started to win a lot of the balls coming out of the box. He started to put pressure on people so that they couldn't have just – a clear counterattack on us. You know, he was breaking up the play a lot of the time. So really, really liked what I saw from him. You know, he just really did a good job of that. And honestly, 
I've said this in my past couple reviews, but I think he deserves more playing time. I think he is a very solid, very hard, disciplined player. I don't know why he doesn't play more. You know, obviously he doesn't have the skills that some of these players have, but I just think the work ethic alone makes him a valuable sub whenever there's tired legs out there, you need somebody that's going to come on and keep possession, he's going to work hard to win the ball back. Kevin's that guy. You know, he does it very, very well. So I'm a little bit disappointed for him that he's not getting more playing time, but hopefully getting a goal in the last game, hopefully playing pretty well, changing the game for us tonight. I'm hoping that we'll sort of force Tyler to have to say, all right, this is a guy we need to start turning towards more more often. Um, Tyrone came on, didn't didn't do much. You know, he had a few crosses in that were, eh, you know, in dangerous positions, but not quite to one of our players. Uh, but, you know, defensively he looks okay. With Anton having a poor night, you have to wonder if maybe he's going to step in for the next game or, you know, what. But uh, it's nice to know that he's still solid enough to where if we need somebody to play that right back position, he's still good enough to be there. You know, because that's one of the things I was getting concerned about is Tyrone going to be able to still be good enough to play because by the time Anton took over, you could tell he wasn't quite there. Um, so, yeah, I'll be very interested to see what's going to happen next as far as our right back position is concerned. And then the last one to come on was Mikey Ambrose. Uh, I, I really do like Mikey as a player. Like I said, I wish he would have started tonight because I think he's a pretty solid defender. Going forward, he doesn't bring that much. And like I said, when you've got a coach who just wants to think about attacking, if you're just a defender and you're not able to play that much, you're not you're going to get overlooked most of the time. Um, but I just think what he brings defensively is what we needed tonight. You know, we needed a left back who was going to shut down the play on the left side, who's going to stop crosses from coming in, because that's what Orlando does. You know, they've got two big strikers who can head the ball really well. They're going to get it out wide. They're going to cross it in, and we didn't have fullbacks that could stop that tonight. So, really disappointed that he didn't get to play, but. You know, he came on and kind of showed that he's still got the defensive quality that we need. Hopefully, Tata can see that. Uh, if Greg's still not available for the next game, maybe he'll get the start. But at this point, I, I kind of I have to realize that it's in this league, it's not about the defensive work. It's not about you know how many clean sheets you get. It's not about how many goals did you stop tonight. It's about how many goals did you get. It's about how many times did you score. That's what... That's what makes headlines in the MLS. How many goals did you score? That's kind of frustrating for me because, I don't know, I prefer to have a team that can score but also can defend very well. But that's just how it is, I guess. So that's it for me. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Who's your man of the match? Let me know. We can talk about it discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your Atlanta United reviews. We'll see you guys in the next game. Peace out.